Pull up a stool and pour yourself a pint as you're about to join three intrepid drinkers, Kevin, Justin, and Mark, as they embark on another beer-tastic voyage. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Beer-Tastic Voyage. My name is Kevin. I'm Hi, Justin. Kevin. Hey, guys. Hey. How we doing? We're part doing two. Good. Part two. So Today's going to be part two of yeah. the Chimney Creek. Yeah, for everybody who listened last time, it's been uh, more than five minutes, yes. and uh, the previous beers have settled in. Uh, for part two, and we're drinking some even higher ABV options now. Yeah, what do we have this with uh, from for part two, Mark? For part two, we have their uh, Tom and End Hellas, which is uh, you know a nice like five percent alcohol. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then we graduate to their Tribute Triple, which is nine point three percent alcohol, another light beer. And, and then we get Chrome. And then, and then we wrap up with Leon, which is uh, the heftiest of the bunch at eleven point six. Yes. Wow. And Leon is a uh, Russian right. Imperial. Yes, it Ooh. is a S'mores Russian Imperial. Style. S'mores, I'm, I, I got a half stack right now. Yeah, not gonna lie. So I'm a little bit excited. If you haven't listened to the first part, you definitely should. Yeah, um, go back and listen to that. But to to recap slightly, we had some uh, I would say uh, very solid uh, versions of German styles. Yes. Um, at that point, um, lagers yeah. and that Maybach was yeah outstanding, and the lager was. I, it's so hard. I couldn't. I, if you asked me to rank them, I could not rank those three beers. Like, me neither. It would be really. Even though I gave one a little bit higher rating, like it's insane. They were all insane. I mean, and that's also why we ended up with bringing back six beers because yeah. there was easily there was four that we wanted, mm -hmm. and the other ones were like they really so, good too. They, they look so like, lonely out there, not with their friends. Yeah, <laughs> we had four. Four is too many for an episode usually. We were kind of like. You let's know, this place deserves to get a second round. So yeah, we're like, let's, let's, let, let's just get two more. And all right, here we are. Part two. So part two. Let's get. So if you want to know a little bit more about them, go back to last week. Time travel. Listen to it. Not a ton of info, but it's a great place for food and beverage after the children are done at Sesame Place. Yeah, it is. A, yeah, exactly. I would. I would consider it. Or, or it's a good primer, like you oh, know, yeah. for liquid courage before you. <laughs> You know, yeah. the night before you go to Sesame so, Place. So book as it? As in our case. Should, should we bookend Sesame Place with it? Go there beforehand, prep, and then go in the come home afterwards and recoup there. So, yeah, I like, think you could do that. I don't know. I don't know. The only thing with going there after Sesame Place is the kids are going, like, head on the tables to sleep. That's a problem? Which, I mean, it, 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 there's it, probably yeah. adults with their head on the tables to sleep. It, I mean, it's it's definitely, like... I don't think we could have gotten there. It's a situation... <laughs> Where, when you're a parent, it's like, which battle do I want to fight today? Gotcha. Yeah. And like, I really want to go there, but when I go there, I'm not going to enjoy myself. Gotcha. So it depends upon your children, essentially. But I can say that the, the place itself is a very kid-friendly when we walked in there. Oh, yeah. There was, a, there was literally an infant there. Yeah, well, they, yeah. they had a kid's menu. The, the kids had crayons. You know, there yeah. you go. In a, and it was still adult enough to have a great time. They, and also, you know, they they had the the bookcase with all the board games and stuff. Oh, right, yeah, that's that's true. I forgot about that. Get some Connect Four going. Yeah, and the, they also had a, like a again because we were there for their one year anniversary mm -hmm. at the uh, the Borough Brew House. They had a like a photo booth area set up. Oh, that's so, kind of fun. Yeah, my uh, wife ended up taking some pictures with uh, uh, my daughter and silly hats. Yeah, Mark and I were going to do that, and then we. We decided that we were adults and, and men, and weren't going to do that. I'm you saying, are you saying we that we can't we, wear silly hats? No, I'm saying we completely fucking forgot. Oh, okay. Making up a reason. That makes sense. <laughs> I didn't really forget. I just didn't really want to. Oh, really? Yeah. I would have done it with you. Um, so, when I, what, what is the name of this one again? It is the Tom and End. Hellas. Yeah, I look at that, and my brain just instantly recognizes the word tamarind, which is not what that word is. No, I keep saying, think, when I first saw it, I'm like, they made a hellas with tamarind? That must be awesome, but that's not it. It's tamarind is kind of weird. Isn't that an animal? No, it's a, it's a spice, right? Tamarind? No, I thought a tamarind was like a... like a. It's either a, a spice or a fruit. Yeah, it's one of those two. No, no, okay. like, isn't there a baboon, like a tamarind baboon or something like that? Uh, I know, it, no, but I do know what you're, I, I have an idea of what you're, what you're going after. Um, okay. Uh, tamarind is in the leguminous tree Sounds of the okay. family Fabriciae, indigenous to tropical Africa. What the fuck is it? It's a fruit. Okay. It's a legume, you just said it's in the legume family. Yeah, but it's considered a fruit. Oh, here. According to Wikipedia. Okay. Drink the beer. All right. And what was the animal that I was talking about? 
give me a second. Poor than Google. So this uh, hell is right. Yes. Um, which is interesting that we have a hell because we talked at hell is that we. Um, am I saying it right? Hell is or hell's? Hellas. Hellas. That um, we said last week that the Mybach is like a strong version of a Hellas. Yes. So to have the light version of it this week is kind of fun. Right. Or, you know, later. Yeah. It, by the way, it was it's Tamarin, just minus the date. Okay. It's a type of monkey. They're really cool looking. I kind of want to buy one. All right. So I wasn't crazy. No. I only live 15 years to exactly buy one of these. There you go. All right. New, new, new pet. I have to call my wife. You're not allowed to peep to I'm the start start Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Okay with that. <laughs> You're not allowed to. When do you buy the old man's bones? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a little bit weirder of a purchase, I think. Yeah. So this pours out, I would say, a uh, little little light, little darker than straw, but pretty light. Yeah. Probably only like three. Not that dark at all. Yeah. We gotta we gotta move our uh, our, sh our shit back over to this corner. Yeah, we have we haven't brought out the uh, yeah I, I, the, the numbers in a couple of weeks. I yeah. I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't put the effort in. I meant to get here earlier and actually help you do it, but because yeah, I've been focused outside. Yes. Um, what do we got on the aroma, guys? Aroma is pretty clean. Um, not getting a ton. Yeah, maybe like just the, the slightest hint of alcohol. Yeah, I, I get a, a little spice, maybe. I don't get a spice. I get a little bit of. The, I get a, a hint of like floral hop. Yeah, just the just the faintest, very faint um, yeast aroma. To it, that, yeah, that's that's what the that's what I mean it. by the spice. That's what I thought. I'm, yeah. I'm, I said spice, but that's a more accurate uh, representation. Yeah, it's it's not over. It's not a crazy yeast flavor like a Belgian style, but it's a little bit of a, a yeast aroma to me. So they're uh, it's five percent ABV, and their flavor text is a Munich style Hellas Lager. Tamen and Hellas is fresh and crisp. The lager is perfect for a warm summer evening. And Oh, for a warm summer evening. Um, and it, it it's nice. It's got the crispness, the uh, the bitterness. I want to say is a little more pronounced in the uh, standard variety as yes. opposed yeah. to the. Uh, I get the. Clock. I get that in, in the uh, at the very end of the sip, like in the back of my throat. I get a little bit of sharpness as I finish the swallow. Yeah, but it's it's definitely not. No, it's not unpleasing at all. No. I'm just saying that's where I'm experiencing. It. Oh yeah, no, yeah. It, I'm just saying it's you know it's a little more noticeable than in the Bach, and that's probably because the, you know, the eight point two alcohol adding adding sweetness to yeah, it to, yeah. to balance it. Out and this more. one is at what you said five five yeah, um, crisp is really the perfect word. It's almost like apple juice. That's what I, I was not the apple juice part, but that you're right. The crisp is is what what I get out of it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a super dry beer. Yeah, it's yeah, really, really dry in the finish. Uh, you know, a little bit of uh, bubbly and hot bite to finish you off, make you want to go back for that next sip. Yeah, it's um, again, you know, when it comes to these these German German styles, and it's just, it's just sort of like smashing the oh, he's the, smashing it. It's yeah, they're they're killing this um, this traditional German styles. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me almost of that. Um, what was that one that we had um, had from? Um, oh, chestnut, urban chestnut, from oh, St. Louis. Yeah, with the Schnickelfritz. Oh, the Schnickelfritz. Yeah. Yes. But that same idea of like we're going with classic German styles and we're really gonna like knock them out of the park. Yeah. And this one does the same kind of thing. Uh, just like the ones we did for the last episode. Clean. Like they said it clean and crisp is are the perfect descriptors for this. Yeah, and it's really good. I mean, uh, there's there's not a heck of a lot else to say about it, so I'm going to kick off the ratings here. Okay, what are you going with? Uh, I will give this one a bomber. I think a bomber is where I'm at, too. Um, on a warm, you know, I, I, I love, you guys, I'm sure, picked up on it by this point, that I, I love kind of like imagining where I'm going to enjoy this beer and kind of how would be the optimal experience to enjoy this beer with. And their idea of like a warm summer evening, just like I feel it's perfect with this. Yeah. Of let me sit down at the end of a long day on my porch, you know, and have a nice tall one of these and I'll be really happy. So, yeah, for me, this is uh, the bitter finish for me is something that I normally don't uh, don't enjoy. I'm starting to appreciate the uh, 
the ability to add that bitterness in order to clean the palate more when right. I drink beer. Um, my initial thought on it was a pint. But as you guys said, bomber, I thought about it. I think it, it, the bomber is definitely the right area because the ability to be able to continuously drink this beer because of that, that balanced um, uh, bitterness aspect it makes it worthy of that, that rating. Right. Yeah, it's it's really good. Very well done. I just want a little more variety after the second glass. Yeah. That's, yeah, that I, think, I think that's fair. I think also that if you if we kind of merge together the items that we had last week with this week, like to do a flight, like, oh, man. to start with this and then go to the Maybach and then the Vienna Lager and then the Double, I would be like, this is this is amazing. How are they doing all this magic? <laughs> Oh, I'm uh, I'm rushing, Kevin. My bad. Uh, no, I you know me, I will flap my gums for a little while longer than talk. <laughs> um, th that is an interesting concept, though. I think they sort of have a built-in flight, even though they, like I said, like we said, they don't they don't do flights at the at least at the brew pub. I don't know what they do with the uh, at, at the brewery brew itself. Yeah. Um, but I think that their board, at least what we had and what we bought here, is kind of like built as a almost a hey, you want to know about German beer? <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely more than half their beers are traditional German styles. Right, and part of the other half is what we're, we're going to pour out right now. Um, we didn't get to have this at the restaurant. They didn't have it on tap, but they did have it available in um, a 12-pack of 12-ounce cans. And this is a... Uh, a six-pack. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, it's, uh, it's not a 12-pack. I was going to say, you guys put a 12-pack of it set on... <laughs> of, the of the triple? Yeah, no. Not uh, that I wouldn't, yeah. but at the, I, so far, everything that they've done is... Completely yeah, worthy of buying I'll be honest, a 12 pack. If they, all, if they only had it available in 12 packs, I definitely still would have bought it because yeah. everything we had there was so good. They, now go back to that can and take a look at the artwork because this this is their tribute triple. Oh, badass! Is that um? Uh, is it supposed to be? Yes, uh, it's tenacious, tenacious D. D reference. Yeah. So their it's flavor is a can. It's yeah. a tribute. Yeah. So their flavor text is: awesome. This is the greatest and best song (parentheses beer) in the world. Tribute. Yeah. Not only are we huge Tenacious D fans, but we're also huge Belgian Triple fans, so this is our tribute. Brewed with a whole lot of Pilsen and Malt, Haller Tower and Saz, hops, as well as a pinch of coriander and bitter orange peel. Tribute has a soft malt backbone that's paired with a fruity, citrusy flavor and spicy yet not overdone phenolic character imparted from our use of an authentic Belgian yeast strain. A 9.3% ABV. The alcohol is well hidden and very... Uh, deceptive, and the dry finish will leave you eager for more. It looks almost like, um, for the artwork to give you guys an idea, it looks almost like a um, Charles Schultz, like a oh, Peanuts, yeah. 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 Peanuts yeah. or Snoopy uh, rendition of uh, the guys from Tenacious Jack D. Black and, yeah, uh, Jack Black. Kyle I don't know Gass. the other guy's name. What's the name? Kai, is it Kyle, Kyle Gass? I'm pretty yeah. sure. I don't know what the other name But yeah, imagine if, you were, if they were draw, drawn in the style of uh, Chuck yeah. Schultz, like that's exactly yes, what it is. That is exactly what it is. That's amazing. Um, it's even got the black and yellow kind of thing going on, almost like a, yeah. like a Charlie Brown. Yeah. You know? You were talking about uh, bookending with uh, uh, this place, with Sesame Place. We sort of did, I guess, because this, when we got home after oh, yeah, Sesame Place, we, you know, it was, we, it was a long-ass day, and uh, we ordered some Chinese food uh, where we were staying, and um, we, we cracked open one of this triple. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was definitely needed at, at the moment. Um, what blows my mind about this beer is the aroma. Um, the aroma on it I get. I get the orange. Um, I get uh, the Belgian yeast character. Um, but not as phenolic as other Belgian yeast. Not that that's a bad thing, but um, it's, it's, no, it's, it, well, it's well well integrated into the it beer. Has, it has a nice spicy quality and is not um, strongly bubblegum or... Clove. Yeah, it, they 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 got whatever, however, uh, whatever temp they fermented that, they found the fine line. Yeah, they found that kind of sweet spot. Yeah. I had to move my glasses because I wanted to get my schnoz more into this glass. Like, oh, uh, it really does hit that like that perfect medium spot. Um, oh god, you get a moment of bubble gum, and you're like, ooh, it's a little sweet, and then that clove comes back in, and okay, it's not overpowering with it. it just smells absolutely delicious, and you it's got kind of, you get the coriander too. Yeah, like, the, the high yeah. the high carb carbonation really you know makes it fizzy on the palate. Yep, and it's, and it's very dry too, so it's light body and finishes dry. And yeah. you're like, the color oh, is really pretty too. Some more. 
I really liked my triple until I had this. <laughs> Fuck. This is outstanding. Um, so I had bitter orange pill and some cardio. I know. I, yeah, I'm going to have to rethink that shit. But uh, it... Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. You, that's you, that's the right that's the that's the right reaction. Oh, this is really good. It is one of like the best examples of a Belgian triple that I've had, and I've, I've, I, since I had the, since I brewed uh, Belgian blonde that apparently is a triple, I started tasting and comparing to other ones, and I, I I've drank a lot of them now. Um, you know, I would say that this one is definitely a little bit more of the orange character than you would normally get, because obviously the, the orange peel and everything. But I think that it works so well with the yeast character. It is done very nicely. But also the uh, the coriander adds a lot of citrusy notes to it as well. And I don't know, I feel like I taste that more strongly than I do the, the orange peel. I might not, I, I haven't eaten a lot of coriander. And I honestly couldn't say before you said that what it would add to something. I actually felt like... You know, coriander, for those who don't know, is the uh, essentially the seeds from a uh, cilantro plant. Right. Um, and cilantro does not taste like anything like, um, or, you know, orange peel. So I, I didn't know that. But that it could be the same thing for me. But I'm getting an orange note. Um. Yeah, it's a little. It's um. It's not hard enough to be lemon. It's definitely closer to orange that's coming through. But it's thank not, God, because I hate lemon. But <laughs> there we go. If you're following along on your bingo boards, Justin has just told you that he hates lemon, so make sure okay. you check that off. We'll next discuss you know, how Mark course. loves coffee. Yes, and then we'll talk about how Mark likes like pineapple. Yes. Yes. Right. Or waffles. Exactly, and then I'll make a bad joke, and we'll be all Which, set. Which, by the way, this morning, yeah. the pancakes were brought to you by Dead Eye Jack. There you go. Um, <laughs> Are there any left? Can I take it for lunch tomorrow? But this is, I miss living here. <laughs> but this is absolutely delicious. Um, you heard me. Like as soon as I took the oh, first sip, I kind of just like paused. And, like, I forgot how good it was. The day we had it, Sesame Place, and how fucking mocked we were. Yeah, it was like a long day. We yeah, you weren't you weren't appreciating. We got you in a random Florida thunderstorm. It was <laughs> Mark and I, in Pennsylvania. Mark and I, had, Mark and I, if you didn't know, Sesame Place is about forty three miles wide. Because Mark and I ran across the whole thing to get back to the lockers. Okay. It's not actually 43 miles wide. That's just what my heart felt like when I was done running, pushing a stroller with two fucking toddlers in it. And Mark's carrying a six-month-old son running next to me. Gotcha. And, and, I'm in, and we're both in flip-flops. Of course. Um. So, yeah, it was a rough Wait, day. You guys, you guys went to the Sesame Place and didn't have official dad flip-flops with the back heel strap? No, there was no... no I was wearing proper sandals. He was okay. wearing... Oh, shut up. My sandals were proper. Yours were fucking sports sandals. I had... I had when you, when you picture... <laughs> When you picture sandals, no, you were wearing flip flops. Okay. When I hear the if, words, if, when I hear sandals, if, I think flip flops. That's not the same thing. At no, all. I, I bet you if you poll. Okay. The majority, uh, this listeners, is a flip. That's flop. a flip flop. That's what I was wearing. Or Most a slide, exactly if that. you really want to be oh, particular. Flop, flop that but this is a flip flop because it makes a stupid flip flop noise when you walk. Right? Yeah. Sandals have because heel it support. Doesn't have a strap around your heel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sound really makes me wrong. You're right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, now I'm wrong. You were wrong, yeah. and now you're more wrong. No, yeah, you're right. I agree with you. All right, all right. But, I stand, I stand stand the, but to stay on the flip flop page, there. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the guy Fieri and say you could put this shit on a flip flop, yeah. and the flip flop would taste delicious. You, you could drink this out of an old, old, old shit kicking boot. And it yeah, you drink, you pour an old boot full of this stuff. I am gonna pop. I'm gonna down it because it's delicious. Donkey sauce. Yeah, why not? Donkey sauce. What the fuck is donkey sauce? That's that's, that's a guy Fieri thing. Ooh. Guy, guy Fieri. Fieri. Dude, I've watched that like everything that guy's ever done. I've never heard him say donkey sauce. No, no. He, Every he, restaurant has donkey sauce. Yeah, Every one of his restaurants, restaurants have donkey sauce. Oh, okay. I've never eaten any of his restaurants. They don't get good Neither have I either. I like watching him on TV. <laughs> oh, you know, on a related note, I don't, I'm pretty sure it closed now, but the restaurant that he had in Times Square. Oh, it's very closed. Apparently, they didn't renew their domain or something like that. <laughs> and somebody else snapped it up oh, and no. was putting all kinds of terrible things oh, no. on the website for a time. Hold uh, on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to, I know that this isn't domain, but I'm going to go to donkeysauce.com just to see what's there. <laughs> I hope the government never looks at your search history. <laughs> Actually, it's a, somebody squatted it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an ads on there. It says uh, Fieri Guy, Barbecue Sauce, Food Guy, Guy Recipe. Yeah, it's yeah. Weak, but I wish I was better. Uh Anyway, there's so much more horrible things you could have put on there. <laughs> back to the back to the triple here. Mm, the um, tribute. The tribute triple. Uh, this is going to be a cake for me. Wow. Yeah. Um, even with the 
barely pronounce the coriander slash orange and, and Belgian yeast together. Like a Belgian beer is not something typically you can drink that much of, yeah. even if you love them. You can drink different styles, Unless maybe. It's a but painter's beer. Maybe. But even if you drink this, even if it's, uh, if it's uh, you bounce from style to style, the yeast character is going to kind of overwhelm you. Mm-hmm. This doesn't do that for me. Okay. Um, I could probably just keep drinking this until I can't stand up anymore, which is probably more likely in the bomber category. Yeah. But I want a keg of it. I want to make sure that my liver knows what, what this is about. <laughs> See, when you it's said bomber, it must be punished. <laughs> when you said bomber category, you hit it perfect for me. Like, that's where this is with me. I could really enjoy a bomber of this because one, it's not nearly going to be enough, but two, is probably going to get me to the point where I'm like, I. I can't move. I can't do anything. Like, I'm done for the night. Um, we should have opened a second can that night. Um, <laughs> of the dribble. Yeah, we had we had the Vienna Lager after that. But, yeah. But, it, it, again, it's it's insanely delicious. And I just, more realistically, probably after the second one, the sweetness and the um, yeast character is going to be a little overwhelming for me. No, I'm kind of with you. Um but I think a bomber is exactly where I want to be. I wouldn't want less than that. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, the bomber is definitely the, the amount for me as well because it is, you know, 9.3% yeah. alcohol. Like, I'll, I'll drink the first class and I'll be like, man, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> I'll drink the second class and I'm going to be like, probably didn't need the whole second glass, but I damn, need it. As long as, it's not, as long as it's not your birthday, you'll probably stop there. After I have the second glass, I'm going to be like, damn, I wish the hammock was set up in the yard. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because it's per- get ready for nap. Get ready for nap time. Um, oh, man, I had something that I popped out of my head. Sorry. That's how that happens after we've uh, yeah. had the beers that we've had. Um, but yeah, this is, just, this is just, this is really tasty. And I, I, oh, this is what I wanted to say. Again, it's not a the the bottle rating is in no way a rating of quality. It is a rating of oh, quantity. Yeah, no, of how exactly. I sure. It is it is all star, five star with quality. It is just sheer quantity. I can only drink, um, you know, a bomber of it. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to remind people on that one because I haven't. You know, we we I know we mentioned yeah. it last week, but never think that this is not. Where it should be. Right. And and for the record, if uh, if we happen to rate something really high or really low, especially really low, that means you should go try it and tell us if we're wrong. Um, yeah. We like being wrong. Exactly. And please correct us. Let us know. Yes. You would not be the only person that has ever written us, written or listened or mailed out. No. You could have one of Power is yours. And, <laughs> and that is, that's, that's exactly what I was going to get at. If you have a, a beer, maybe we even haven't even had it on here. Maybe you live in in a tiny little town, and uh, we're never going to have your beer. Who knows? If you want to write up a review about a beer from uh, a local craft place, um, or actually really any place, we'd yeah. love to read it on the air. Um, we will read it verbatim how you write it. So if you want to get really drunk and write it, that's even better. Yeah. Or you can uh, hit us up on the social media and let us know that you said hi. You can even call us. And do I have still have a card, Andy? I do still have a card. You can even call us at 631-605-7240. Leave us a voicemail. We like drunk voicemails, too. That's okay, too. I'm talking to you, Steve. I'm talking to you, Steve Wynn. I know you've been brewing up one. (laughs) Or so he tells me. Yeah, a drunk voicemail. He's planning it. Well, yeah. I mean, he told me he was going to create and have a voicemail for us. I don't know if it's him calling in, if he's paying someone to call in. I don't know what he's going to do. But uh, apparently he's uh, he's got one in the works. Okay. We'll look forward to hearing from you, Steve. And any other listeners. The last thing that I really look forward to is this Leon. Russian Imperial Stout called Leon that you guys have sold me hard on. Yeah, so before we continue to sell it hard, what can you? That, what we got flavor text-wise for this? Yeah, I was going to say, let, yeah. me, let me read the flavor text here. So Leon is a big beer. So big, it has twice as much the malt as any other beer we've brewed. the bigliest? On top of the <laughs> copious <laughs> amounts of two-row barley, Munich Victory chocolate, black pen. And caramel 80 malt in this beer, each 15 barrel oh. brew has 50 pounds of freshly in house handmade marshmallow fluff, as well as 16 pounds of Virgis Sweet Baker's chocolate and 30 pounds of crumbled graham crackers. I hope Leon uh, clocks in at just over 80 IBUs and 11.6% ABV. Does it taste like a s'mores? That's for you to decide, but either way, this is one fun beer to make, not to mention to drink. And I, I, will, say, I will say this. If anyone at home has ever tried to make a marshmallow, because I have, 
it's fucking hard. Like, it, it, once you have it down, it's easy. But the ingredients are so sticky and weird and gross. Like, it's not fun to fucking make marshmallows. <laughs> so the fact that it goes into trouble to make their own marshmallow fluff to do this, yeah. I didn't even know that before right now. That is, like, crazy to me. Um, so, uh, Kevin, have you smelled it yet? I haven't. I'm, okay, kind of, I'm, I'm giving it a little. Yeah, you just covered yeah, Mark, it. I just covered yeah. it. I'm giving it a little swirl. Mark I and I have drank this and contemplated it, like, over dinner. So, <laughs> okay. you know, we, this so is, you guys yeah. are a little ahead of the curve. Right. right. That's why I want to know what, what your thoughts but, are more, even more than but us. Knowing, but knowing you guys sold it hard, so I poured a good portion. I poured a half a... Half a goblet here. Yeah, I fucked, I fucked myself. I forgot we had a growler. On yeah, before the we've got the tulip glasses today, and I poured a solid half a tulip glass as a taste. And it is certainly dark black. It is dark. Yeah, well, it, it's got a beautiful, uh, you know, nice little fine bubble, uh, excellent head retention. And the um, nice dark, tiny tan, bubbles. Dark okay. tan head. Right. As Mark and I studied for BJCP. Yeah, the tiny <laughs> bubbles everywhere. You know that song? Yes, yeah, I do. There you go. So, all right. So, what do we got here? All right. Come on, man. I'm uh, I'm dying to know. I don't want to say anything because I know we've already sold it super hard. Um, okay. Well, you definitely get your strong roast character and a lot of alcohol. Um. Yeah, you get an alcohol also, but it's not like a hot alcohol. No, it's not. It's not, and it's not a boozy alcohol either, which is nice. I might be a little like, you know, taken by the flavor text, but I really feel like I do smell almost a graham cracker. Like, uh, in there a little bit. I feel like there's roast. a hint of, the, yeah. of it there, yeah. I, th I mean, I think it's more from the malt than the actual graham cracker they put in. I believe it's Dr. Otto Graham, and his crackers are not what I'm picking up with. Here. <laughs> Which, by the way, as much as I love graham crackers, not a huge fan of Dr. Otto Graham's plan, and that he tried to use them to, like, subdue, like, sexual urge. Well, yeah, I mean... These... Him and John Harvey Kellogg were bros. <laughs> like, they're not... not... Eat his graham cracker so you don't masturbate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's never worked for me. <laughs> Here's what I want to know. How many times have you actually tried that experiment? Well, it's enough times, it's enough times where I know, I know that graham crackers change. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the crumbs. you got to wash them. Yeah. Wash them. <laughs> um, Coarsely ground grains. <laughs> Maybe there's just a little bit of like that marshmallow kind of coming through in the aroma. Yeah, I think I'm fooling myself into that. I don't know that it's there. I don't. I, know, yeah. To be honest, like yeah. the roast is the primary thing that, yes. I, that I pick up. Yeah. A little bit of alcohol, a little bit of chocolate, maybe a little tiny bit of like vanilla in kind of flavor that's coming through, but not a whole lot. But you can smell that there's. It just smells really good. I, to find the exact parts are hard, but it does smell really good. Yeah. I, yeah, you should taste it because the smell is like a fucking appetizer. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, like, going back to this, like, I'm amazed that this is 80 IBUs because it is I was going to so, bring that up, too. So smooth. But that also tells you how much fucking malt is in this. Yeah, that, they needed that, that bill balance. was huge. Oh, yeah. That bill was huge. And to be throwing, you're going to have to need a lot of hops to stack up against it. 80? I don't remember what uh, Event Horizon, our, our Imperial style was. It was, what, was it 60s? Maybe. Maybe, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, fuck. That's, yeah, when you said I, 80 I've used, I have used, I made a mental note to go back to it. Okay, i got to say this before I forget it. I mean, no this is, um, You know when you mix... You know when you get like hot chocolate and you mix in the whipped cream as yeah. opposed to just leaving it on top, but you mix it in to kind of create that little bit of creaminess yeah. and vanilla to the to the beverage. Or you try to cool it down like I do because I'm a pussy. Well, that's because you're a bitch, but yeah. I do it for flavor and that's what this tastes like. Yep. There is like this vanilla cream mm. kind of flavor going through there with the marshmallow, but it's marshmallow flavor like that goes through there. That in no way is thick or cloying or anything, but it just has this little like ribbon of sweetness through the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, that like I kind of want you, I kind of want to shut off the video and let you guys leave me alone with this for a little while. Like <laughs> my favorite part about this beer is the finish. We can't see under the table with the camera. So that's we, true. We, we that's did. true. Oh, <laughs> that was Kevin. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. Sorry. I'm excited. Um, oh, so my good. favorite part about this beer is the is the finish. Um, you get this uh, sweet, like nuttiness on the finish. I, I I definitely get chocolate. Yeah, from it, but it is so smooth, uh, but also like 
just barely sweet because of the bitterness from the hops in it. It's just yeah. They also use baker's chocolate, right? Or yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that, I feel like that's really the quality. You say chocolate. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. That's yeah. Like yeah. But that's specific. That's definitely right. right. But yeah. they but yeah. adding that marshmallow gives it that little bit of sweetness yeah, and the back to it. Definitely. That yeah. doesn't that doesn't make it overly bitter. We've had we've had stouts on this podcast with baker's chocolate in it before, even baker's milk chocolate. Right. But it's just it creates a bitter and doesn't have the balance to it. The marshmallow gives it the balance back, and to make it a little bit smoother, so you don't just get the bite because you you're already going to get the bite from the roasted malts. You don't necessarily need that bite. Also, doubling up coming from the coming from the semi sweet chocolate. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, the only thing I'm not picking up is graham cracker anywhere. Not the flavor, no. No, no, no. I didn't um, and I really don't. And it might just be me that I was petting the dogs earlier. But I'm not able to pick it up in the nose. I think, I mean, I'd like to think that I am, but right. I, it, it, it's faint enough where I'm, I'm not confident in that. I think that might be a, a, a figment of my imagination because it, it's being read to me. I can, yeah, you kind of get the little power of suggestion that yeah. going on there. But it's absolutely delicious. It's one of the like, it's so complex and simultaneously like you just drink it. Yeah. And this is one of the few Russians that I'm ever that I'm ever going to say this. Don't barrel age this. Oh, don't God. do anything to it. Like, don't stick it in a no, barrel. Yeah. Don't do anything it's to it. It's got enough of that it, vanilla quality. Yeah. On the it's, top. it's great the way it is. I don't want. And, again, my wife loves this beer. Yeah. My wife. Yeah. I don't want it. Never drank. I don't want it hotter. I don't want it in any way. Like, I my want wife, it as it is. My wife is one of those people that thinks Guinness is too heavy of a beer. Right. And my wife likes this beer. She was, I was, she was like, oh, wow. Right. Yeah, but Steph liked it too. She hates yeah. all dark beers. I will say this though, at least Amy is usually willing to try any kind of beer. Oh, uh, yeah, Steph, Steph, will, try. Steph, Steph will too, yeah. much more begrudgingly. Yeah. But this time she was like, Ooh, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. But my wife at 11.2 or 11.8. 11.6. Nothing 11, will have seen her wow, this drunk. None of those things. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Everything will have seen her this drunk. If she had a pint of this, it would be like, I would need a wheelbarrow. Which, by the way, we did we did make that joke when we were there because she had, what, she started with a cider? A mead. A mead. I was so actually, I was actually gonna, I'm going to mention that while we're, while we're talking about it. Yeah, they, they had some pretty... They had some meads and ciders on tap, too? Yes, yeah. taps, yeah. Wow. So, they, yeah, they had guest lines, and uh, we ha only had two of the guest lines. Actually, I really wanted to try the Belgian Strong Dark. Did I? I don't remember. I don't think I did. No, no, but I don't. I don't know who that. It's a trade de Mark, uh, but I don't know who it's from. But they had a, a haymaker all uh, all day rose. I think haymaker is the meadery. Okay. And it was a mead that uses wildflower honey and Cabernet Sauvignon skins and juice. Okay. Well, you had some too, right? Yeah, I had yeah. Sip of that. that I, was do nice I do yeah. like Cab Sauv. Like that's one of my favorite ones. That was very good. And then she followed that with Stone and Key Cherry Pie Cider. Right. And she was like, oh, I just had the one. Like, should I really have it? I'm like, you're not driving. Like, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you're not driving it. Or, or, no, I'm like, you're not driving. Just like, yeah, they'll never have seen you so drunk. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was going to be like, don't worry. Well, everyone's seen you drunker than this, so don't worry yeah. about it. But yeah, they were, the. they have five guest taps. That's a good number. So they had, I mean, just to so give a They had what, like eight on ten, eight, eight of their own beers? Not more like, than that, way more. At least 12. One, wow. two, three, four, five. Carry the one. One plus one. Plus like, one plus their one beers plus were two. page one and half of the back of page two. Wow. They had 15 of their own and another five on tap. That's a lot to keep on tap. Yeah, and the other thing is, though, I mean, like, for instance, the uh, the triple? Yeah. Not on tap, only in cans. Okay. Um, they had most everything um, available in cans. They, yeah. do have, they do have a quad that Mark and I both really wanted. Yeah. And they had it on the uh, they had to go the, area, but yeah, they, the did, they didn't have uh, any bottles there. Yeah. I would be stoked to try their quad right now. I've heard from uh, actually uh, one of our friends, Greg. Um, he had, I believe, he's had the quad when I talked to him, yeah. and he said it was outstanding. Greg, if you've had the quad, and I know you I know he's a bottle with Leon in the fridge yeah. right now. And I know you listen. And I know you listen to the podcast. Let us know about it. Yeah. Via one of the contacts, one of the contacts here, not just texting the guys. Right, yeah. Yeah. Call, call in and tell us about the quad. Contact yeah. us through the official channels. Come on. <laughs> don't, 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 have your people, have your don't send me a people. Facebook message or text yeah. Justin. Have, have, have your people call our people. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the guest I'll take a Facebook team. message as official. So, the, yeah. I'll be okay with that. To, to the podcast. Yes, yes. yes. Not, not just to you. Not to me. Yes. Yeah. So, 
they're, they're even eclectic with their guest lines, because their guest lines were a porter, a Belgian strong dark, a red ale, a mead, and a cider. Those were their guest lines. Wow. I mean, I think it's I think it's cool to have the mead and the cider on there, but definitely they, I like that their other guest lines are not styles that they carry. Yeah. You know, sometimes you go to a brewery and you see it like, hey, this is our thing. Oh, and, then, and also, when, you know, we were there, so they were doing – they they had a special going on for five dollar margaritas, oh, which yeah. is what my wife was drinking while we were having dinner. Listen, a good margarita is not a bad beverage. I love margaritas. No, no, I'm like I'm, it's it's hard to say no. Some days it's hard to say no. That, that's like, try what, what I'm <laughs> getting at. Like the variety they had. Like even if you're not a beer drinker, yeah. like there's options for you. There you go. And Amy was very happy with the margaritas. Yeah. She had two of them. Listen, you got a good you got a good mixed drink like. A good cocktail with quality liquor and quality ingredients is, is pretty good. Right. Um, I was talking with Mark earlier that one of our other favorite podcasts uh, recently did a few episodes on bourbon. And I like bourbon. And I'm like, I should drink more bourbon. <laughs> like, bourbon's one of those things that, like, yeah, maybe I do need a little bit more of that in my life. And Not that I can think of any cocktails with bourbon in it, but... Yeah, why not? We should drink more bourbon. <laughs> we yeah, drink I, more bourbon. I know Mark wouldn't be down for it, but uh, because of the uh, the weirdness of it, I would like to to uh, to learn more about scotch. Not necessarily like drink a lot of it, but I would like Dude. to I would like to try some scotches that are very good. Scotch is yeah. a is a deep deep rabbit hole. Man. Right, I know. Like you go you go into that like you you think like you know how you have like you told me once that like, you're like. I like woodworking, but I can't go into turning because turning is a completely different rabbit hole. Yeah. Like, that's what scotch is. Like, scotch is this completely different puddle yeah. that if you go in there, you may never come back. I've had it in two scotch barrel-aged beers that I, I right. enjoy both of them. And um, one of them was due to Mark knowing for a fact that he would fucking hate it. <laughs> that was the, the uh, from the McKellar from the... the oh, movie. yeah, yeah. Rachel and I did I, a, I I'm sorry. I do not like peat smoke character. Rachel and I did a dinner. It was a it was a um, a murder mystery dinner with a with a scotch tasting. Wow! Which was like awesome at, at this. Um, it basically shit faced on scotch. You don't know who did it, huh? It wasn't shit faced on scotch. Yeah. You only get like four samples oh, of okay. scotch, but like they pair it with like each portion of the meal, and then and, in, and then afterwards they go through and they you know you play the dinner, you play the uh, the game, but man. Like, I could totally get behind scotch. It's really good. And good scotch is fantastic. I think I've only had bad scotch. Huh. We'll get you some good scotch. We'll try it. Sounds like a plan. Um, Ratings-wise on this, it's difficult for me because I'd have to say this isn't the... You know, we drink a lot of Russian Imperial Stout, but I feel like this is... I think it's safe to say top five for me all time. Russian Imperial Stout. Um, I'm going to go growl on it. The only reason why it's not a keg is because I would die. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is... It's not like the, the strongest Russian Imperial style I've ever had, but it, it sits he- it, it sits heavy with me. <laughs> How about you, Mark? Not not like yeah. not the flavor, but just like I, for some reason, I think it's the combination of the, the complexity of, of the uh, flavor and the alcohol content. It goes down so out. easy, and it's eleven point six percent alcohol. Yeah. like that bears repeating eleven point six percent alcohol. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this is every glass of this is two and a half standard beers. There you go. I'm trying, like, I, I'm concentrating on not drinking it quickly. Like, that's how how strong I know it is from, from when we had it. I mean, I, I really do love this beer. It's definitely a growler for me. But again, if, like. Would you say the same thing I said? Like, top five beer, Russian Imperial? Oh, that was, yeah, yeah, easily, okay. easily. Yeah, I'm going to concur with you that this hits in those top Russian Imperial stouts I've ever had. Um. Uh, as I warmed up, as we were talking and kind of going off on that little tangent, I was holding the goblet and trying to warm it up as best I could, and the vanilla really comes through as it gets a little warmer, it certainly does. and it's even more pleasant. Um, I think we might have even had it a little too cold to start with. I would agree. Um, but it's just absolutely delicious. Sheer volume, I can't go with... I couldn't do a growler of it, just because... Uh, the volume of it, I couldn't make it through that much. If the NBA Finals were on, I could probably do two. Right. <laughs> anyway, two rounds. Um, just kidding. Maybe during a World Series game for me. Um, but this is a solid bomber for me. It is a bomber 
quality wise, it is incredible. But I want a bomber of this, and I magically want my endless supply of bombers of this. <laughs> right. You, know? you want to be able to have a bomber of it basically every day. Yeah, I want to have two of these. Not, I can't go through the keg because maybe not have it every day, but this would be really, really good to have available pretty frequently. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bomber, but it's again, it's a very high quality, really great bomber because I don't want anybody to think that this is in any way not amazing. Exactly. I mean, I'm trying to think of like my favorite Russian Imperial stabs now, and it's probably like. Uh, Probably like this one, Boris the Spider is up there, is one of my favorites, and like Old Rasputin was amazing. Black Friday, Black Friday's Imperial Stout, so. Yeah, uh, yeah Black Friday, like the, it falls into that same category. Yeah. Like it's just, anytime you hand me this, I'm never going to complain at all. And Tim, it's a really good capstone to the beers that we've had from them. Uh, Nishimini. Nishimini. Um, to go from a lager last a lager and the double last week that are a little bit lighter to the hells and the triple this week which are a little bit strong uh, the hells was really light but the triples a little bit stronger than this like all of them have been so incredibly well crafted what I like uh, about the Russian Imperial Stout in uh, contrast to the other styles we had or the other beers we had is that this one had marshmallow in a whole bunch oh, of other yeah, objects. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a, yeah. And they were still able to pull off an outstanding beer. So it just shows the, the level of craftsmanship that go on across the board in every single beer. Yeah, I don't feel like I've ever got, I don't feel like any of these have been the gimmicky beer of like, we're going to do one thing to the nth degree. No, and that's what's so good about this is it's got the chocolate, it's got the fly, right. it's got the gram in it. But they're blended into the beer so well that it's not, it, it's not smashing you over the head with any one it's of those It's still things. beer. Yeah, it's, it's right. still an imperial style in the end. It's not a. It's not a marshmallow beer. Yeah, I've had more than. I've had more than three or four, s'more flavored beers. Like it's For sure. not. It's not. It's not like the most original idea ever. But this is probably the best one I've ever had. It's far and away. From it's possible. way better than the, uh, Lake Placid, one. Yeah, it's s'mores. Yeah, I, that one. I, there was one. For, that one from Southern Tier does one too, and I mean. Everything Southern Tier does in that area is, to me is over the top with the sweetness. Like they, have a, right. they, have a, they have a cinnamon bomb and, one that's terrible. And that's kind yeah. of where I'm getting at. Like I feel like sometimes when breweries try to hit a big note or a big flavor, they go a little overboard with it. And this just manages to maintain that same kind of quality of subtle, just high quality. Like we're not doing overly fancy, but we're going to do it really high quality, which... I think that sums up everything that we've had. Like, we're not going crazy with it. We're just going to do the highest quality that you can imagine. I agree. Yeah. I think it's a great way to end it. This is yeah. extremely high quality, well crafted beer. And uh, I have a feeling we'll be back at Sesame Place at some point. And I think the main reason we'll go back to Sesame Place is because <laughs> we're going to, to Shimmy Creek. Yeah, yeah. Head, up, head up the Bar Brew House again. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not next. I probably won't be there with you next oh, summer. Don't, yeah, don't next worry. summer, but two summers from now, I'm sure I'll yeah. be there with you. I'm pretty sure we're going to take some sort of massive group trip there. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I said, like I said. One, you know, one year old, probably not. Two or three year old, probably. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. But guys, if you guys, girls, whoever's listening, if you are out there. If and, you're anywhere with, you know, uh, well, let's see. Where are Here's they? a question. How far off, how, how far off the pet turnpike is it? Oh, no. know. It's pretty, it's, it, it's, it's, it's actually not far from Jersey. Like it's closer to Jersey than okay. anything else. Well, no, because I'm just imagining yeah. doing that drive across so, Pennsylvania on the Penn Turnpike. Can we just hop off for like a quick stop? If you're on the Penn Turnpike, it's pretty far. Probably. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it should be fine. Can, the, the brewery proper is in Croydon, PA, which is right. a, like northwestish from the city center of Philly. Okay. And then the Borough Brew House is in Jenkintown, PA. Which is like northeast from the city center of Philly. Okay. I can tell you. I can tell you this. Next time Steph and I go to Philly, yeah, we're we're gonna make it make our way either back here or or up there at some point. You know, either on the way back or at some point. That's yeah. There's gonna be a stop. This is gonna be a road. Yeah, trip. this this is a guaranteed stop from now on. Well, so. cheers, guys, um, who made it and. Guys at the chimney, cheers to you. Thank you so much for fantastic brews and guys. Yeah, thank you for you're, you're killing it. Thank you for bringing it back. 
Oh yeah. Sure. Like I said, we we were looking at it. Like we have easily four beers that we want to buy. It's it wasn't much of a stretch to pick two more. No, I was like, do you want to get six? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Cheers, everybody. Well, cheers, Thanks. everybody. Cheers. If you enjoyed Beertastic Voyage, please be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and don't forget to review and rate us. The guys can be found online at www.beertasticvoyage.com on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash beertasticvoyage, and Twitter and Instagram at beertasticshow, or send them a good old-fashioned email at beertasticvoyage at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and cheers for local beers.